Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. And the topic for today's session is how to process mainframe job conditionally. And in this session, you will learn how to use conditional parameter in JCL and what are the different condition codes that you can use when you're processing job conditionally. Apart from that, you will also learn how to use if then else statement in JCL. So before I start with today's presentation, I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. And in case if you have already subscribed to our channel, then I would like to say a big thank you for your subscription. So let's get started with conditional parameters. So the conditional parameters in JCL is very important from the programmer's perspective, but at the same time, they are very confusing. So let's try to understand the overall structure of the mainframe job. The following example is a graphical representation of a job. This job include nine different steps and each step is performing a specific task to produce a monthly tax report. So if you notice the flow diagram, the job steps are dependent on one another. And in case if any of the job step ends abnormally, then the remaining job steps will not be executed. But conditional processing allows you to execute program conditionally. In other words, you can specify whether to execute a job step based on the result of previous job step. So in the following example, I can very well execute step 09 based on the return code of any of the previous step. So let's say if my job fails on step 04, even then also I can execute step 09 based on the return code of step 04. Now let me quickly summarize the important points that we have discussed so far. And after that, I'm going to explain the syntax of JCL conditional parameter and if then else statement. So the first point is that conditional processing of JCL is a technique by which you can either execute or skip the job step based on the previous step return code. Second important point is that you can use either JCL con parameter or if then else statement to process job conditionally. Third point is that you can use JCL conditional parameter on both execute statement and job statement. And the last point is there are two important terms that you should always remember. First one is step return code and second one is job completion code. A step return code is issued for every job step that is executed in a job. If the step ends normally, then the return code would be zero. And in case if it fails due to some problem, then the value would be between one to four zero nine five. Similarly, a job completion code is generated when a job is completed. If the job ends normally, the completion code is zero. And in case if job fails due to some reason, then the completion code consists of three digit code with a prefix of S. In this case, it can also be called as a bend code. Now let's talk about the syntax of conditional parameter. So the syntax of conditional parameter is fairly simple and easy to understand. You have conditional keyword followed by an equal sign. And thereafter you have two sub parameters. First one is value and second one is operator. So the possible value of operator field is greater than, greater than equal to, less than, less than equal to, equal to, and not equal to. Apart from that, the value sub parameter is used to specify a numeric value of uh, a return code. So it could be 4, 8, 12, 16, depending on your requirement. Now, as you know, that conditional parameter can be used on job statement and execute statement. So first we will focus on how you can use conditional parameter on job statement. So when you specify the condition parameter in a job statement, as shown in the following table, you specify the condition that caused the job to stop processing. For example, suppose you have a job with several steps and if any of the step issue a return code of four or more, the job should stop processing and bypass the remaining steps. In such a case, the condition parameter would be coded as condition equals to four comma less than equals to. 
This means that if 4 is less than or equal to to the return code issued by any job step, the remaining job steps are to be bypassed. So if the return code is 8, the remaining steps are bypassed because the condition is true. In contrast, if the return code is 0, the condition is not true, so the job continue with the next job step. Now the table on the left showcase the relational operator that you use to code conditional parameters. And the table on the right illustrate how different type of conditions are handled. The table on the bottom right is used to specify how you can use conditional parameter in your job statement. Now let me quickly explain the examples that I've specified in second table. So there are three examples. So first one is condition code equals to 4 comma GT that is greater than. So in this case, your job will continue in case if the step return code is greater than equal to 4. And your job will terminate in case the step return code is less than 4. Similarly, you have condition code equals to 8 comma greater than equal to. So in this case, your job will continue in case if uh, return code is greater than 4 and it will terminate in case if return code is less than equal to 8. Similarly, you have third that is condition code equals to 0 comma not equals to. So the job will continue if the step return code is 0 and in case if step return code is not equals to 0, then the job will terminate. Now, as you know that conditional parameter can be used at job level or at an individual step level, right? So the conditional parameter on execute statement is more flexible than conditional parameter on job statement. And the syntax of conditional parameter used on job statement or on execute statement is almost same. But with the help of additional sub parameter, you have more control over the execution of individual job step. You can specify a return code and a relational operator to determine whether to skip a particular job step instead of all the subsequent job steps. You can also specify a step name in order to test the return code for a specific job step. And you can also use two additional sub parameters that is even and only in case if you want to execute certain job steps if your job fails. Now let's try to understand the use of conditional parameter with the help of an example. So the first table outlines the difference between even and only subparameter. So in case if you have specified even on any job step, then the system will execute the job step even if a previous job step has abended. Similarly, if you have used only subparameter, then it will tell the system to execute the job step only if a previous job step has abended. So in nutshell, the only subparameter is useful for steps that perform recovery processing in case if your job abended. And it is usually coded as the last step in your JCL or a job. The even subparameter is useful for steps that do not depend on the successful execution of previous steps. So if you do not specify even or only subparameter in any of the step in a job, then in case if any of the step fails, then rest of the subsequent steps will be bypassed. Now let's focus on second table that outline two example. So in the first example, the step will be bypassed if the previous step return code is eight or greater than eight. Now in second example, the current step will be bypassed if step two return code is eight. So in the similar fashion, you can use to check the return code of previous step or any specific step. You can also specify multiple conditions with the help of logical operators. Now let's focus on third table. It actually outlined the sample JCL which is using conditional parameter on step one and step two. So if you look at step one, I'm using conditional parameter as 07 comma less than. And in step two, I have specified the conditional parameter as conditional equal to eight comma equal to comma step zero one. So in this case, I'm checking the return code of step zero one. So during the initial days, the conditional parameters were the only option for the conditional processing of the JCL. But because it is awkward and confusing for the programmers, the later version of the operating system added three JCL statement 
that works together for the purpose of conditional processing. And these statements are if then, else and end if. Now let's try to understand how you can use if then else statement to process job steps conditionally. So here's the syntax of if then else statement. And to begin the conditional execution, you have to code if statement followed by the condition that you want to test. After the condition, you have to code then clause followed by whatever JCL statement you want to execute if the condition is true. And if required, you can code else statement followed by whatever JCL statements you want to execute in case condition is false. And finally, you end the conditional structure with end if. So with the help of an if then else statement, you can specify conditions in your JCL. And it works in the same way as if you are coding if then else statement in your COBOL, Java, C++ or any other high level programming language program. And in order to specify the relational expression or condition in your if then else statement, you can use the keyword RC followed by an operator and then a specific value that you want to check. And RC is generally used to specify the return code of a previous job step. And if you want to specify the return code issue by a specific job step or a procedure step, then you can use step name.rc or proc step.rc. Now let's look at a couple of examples so that you can understand how exactly you can use if then else statement to process job steps conditionally. So again, you have a table on the right hand side. So this is basically an operator that you can use to specify your relational expression along with RC as your uh, return code of the previous step. Now in the following example, which is outlined in table two, I've used if then else statement to process job steps conditionally. So in this example, step 03 is executed if any of the previous job step has an issue or a return code greater than or equal to 8. Otherwise, step 4 will be executed. And there's an important point that I want to highlight that if you notice that I have not specified the name field for any of my condition like if, else or end if, right? So if you are not using any name field for any of these conditional statements, then you should leave column three as blank and you should start your if, else or end if uh, statement after that particular position itself. So this is how you can use conditional parameter or if then else statement to process your job conditionally or as per your requirement. So ladies and gentlemen, this marks an end to our today's session. And in case if you have any question or any suggestion, then please do mention that in the comment section because your suggestion and your feedback is very important for us and it will help us in improve the quality of our videos. Apart from that, I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. And do share this video with your friends who are actually working on mainframe or who are actually learning mainframe. Apart from that, ladies and gentlemen, also remember that we are running a contest and this is a monthly contest and five lucky winners will going to get access to the advanced version of this course on Udemy or Skillshare. And to participate, you only need to subscribe to our channel and leave your feedback in the comment section. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening so patiently and stay tuned for our next video. Until then, I'm signing off. Thank you. Bye-bye and take care.